A few weeks ago, I designed and 3D printed a turbine, then a transmission, and then some suspension. And in this video, I'm gonna add it all together, design and make some new parts, and hopefully end up with a working car. In the last video, I designed and built a rear frame for this car, including the suspension, differential, and wheel hubs. To pick up where I left off, I'm going to start this video by cutting some axle pieces. I needed some kind of a universal joint for the rear axle because of the wishbone suspension. I took inspiration from an old RC car that I had and designed and printed something similar. Basically, the end of the axles form a T, and this T rotates inside a cup attached to another bit of axle. So anyways, I cut a bunch of these axle pieces and then I grinded all the sharp edges down smooth so they can easily fit into the bearings. The next thing I did was complete the final assembly of the differential. I used CA glue to hold shafts to gears and bearings into the diff housing. Because 3D printed parts become less precise as you work with smaller models, the diff is relatively large compared to the size of the car, but it worked out in the end so it didn't really matter. Here you can see the diff properly working, as well as the axle universal joint connectors attached to the ends of it. While all that was going on, I had some fresh suspension arms printing on the Bamboo Labs printer. Next up, I got a piece of wood for the chassis of the car, which I cut into shape with a bandsaw. I stole the wheels off of that old car I had from earlier for this project, but the rims didn't work with the steel rods I was using for axles, so I had to design some brand new ones in CAD. And here it is, a fresh wheel. The next thing that I wanted to take care of was the front suspension. During the design of this part, I reused the print and place ball joint concept that I first made when working on my mini RC car. The wheel hubs were designed to snap into these ball joints which were permanently embedded in the swing arms. The orientation and location of the suspension is exactly the same as it is in the rear, just with slight design changes to adapt to the needs of the front. Going back to the rear now, I CA glued the universal cups onto the wheel axle. To do that, I had to slightly disassemble the rear suspension. This was easy due to the push pins and 3D printed C-clips which hold most everything in this project together. Using some of those little pieces of steel rod that I cut up in the beginning of this video, I'm now going to make the axles by gluing these little adapter things to the end of them. I began to reassemble the rear suspension again, but this time with the axles in place hoping that they would fit alright. One of the things with this car that I worried about was the placement of where the universal joint was. The way the project planned out over time, the axis for the joint wasn't directly vertically underneath the axis of rotation for the suspension. This causes some slight variation in geometry for the length the axle needs to be when the suspension flexes. However, I was relieved to see that it was a minor enough offset that it didn't really affect too much. Going back to the body now, to get the orientation of the transmission and the output shaft to mesh nicely with the differential, I needed to cut a hole in it. I started by drilling a pilot hole, then sawing the rest out. Once I made the hole, I found a thin sheet of plywood and glued it underneath the body to support the turbine and the transmission. Once that was dry, it was time to attach the suspension assemblies to the body. Again, for this I used CA glue because it seemed like the best option. And here it is, mostly assembled. To get to the point where it is now from where I left off in the last video it took roughly 2-3 to three weeks due to school and other stuff. I figured I'd make a third video on this project as this is definitely a longer project and I wanted to get something out sooner than later. The only things left to do now are steering, attaching the EDF, and some other electronics. I've done some testing previous to getting this far with the EDF and the turbine, and I'm a bit concerned. I'm not sure if it's going to be able to spin the turbine up with the weight of the car, the friction from the joints, gears, bearings, and whatever else. EDFs are more made for moving high quantities of air very fast, and less so about compressing it. Even still, I'm hopeful it will work to some degree, and regardless of if this does work though, I'm still going to plan to rip off the turbine assembly and just stick a typical RC motor onto the transmission and see how that works. I appreciate it a lot if you've made it this far in the video, so if you have any ideas, please comment them below and I'll do my best to take a look. Thanks so much for watching.